So, what happens when you hear about this amazing breeder who happens to have this adorable puppy that you have fallen head over heels for, but they lived like 12 states away? Puppy transport. Now, there are several different options to choose from, from which I will explain to you later in the episode, but in this case, I am sharing with you... <laughs> we had a poop sedent. A small poop sedent. A day in the life as I transport a puppy from Florida to New Jersey. There she is! <laughs> Ask and you shall receive, peeps. Another day in the life episode for the best in show bitch. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that little bell so you don't miss a single episode. To fly out of and then back into Orlando International Airport on the same day definitely requires one to get up at the, uh, I don't know, ass crack of dawn. And having to spend over 12 hours either in an airport or on a plane definitely has its own set of requirements. I am not a morning person by nature, so to be woken up that early definitely required me to go to bed just as early the night before. But it still didn't make me rise and shine wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, that is for sure. Yeah, I drug ass. Going out in public and then being in public all day long? I didn't necessarily want to look like a homeless woman. So, I started by leaving my hair natural. Yes, I flat iron the crap out of my hair on the regular. Went for a choice of light makeup, you know, so I could have at least some color. And do I really have to explain that comfort is definitely key to a day like today? I'm traveling from hot weather to cold weather to hot weather, and we all know airplanes can start off feeling like you're in Hades and end up feeling like you're in Antarctica. So it's all about layers. Now I need to find something that's halfway decently comfortable to wear, so... I'm going to be in it all day and on a plane. So I think I'm just going to wear sweats, maybe. Something, you know, lightweight, comfortable. But I'm going to Newark. I need a jacket. After the ideal travel outfit was picked out, it was time to shock the mm. crap out of my dogs and let them out like hours Hi, earlier than they're used to. Hi. You ready to fly? You ready to fly today? <laughs> it's the sound of my people. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Next on the agenda is a fueling up. Not only with my, you know, go-go juice. Every drop. I need every drop. Can't take it on the plane, but this is gonna get me to the airport. <laughs> In one piece. <laughs> but with also what could be my most likely only solid meal of the day. Give me a little bit of eggs so I can have some protein in the morning because I'm not gonna be able to eat my five meals a day if I'm in the air and, you know, flying. So I'm going to eat my eggs. This is going to be like my main meal of the day and um, get some energy. As I've shared with you in the past, I stick to a very regimented diet and I do meal prep. A unique day like today does not mean I can't stick to my plan though. I'm traveling as light as possible. I don't want to be paying those extra baggage fees on top of a hundred dollar pet fee. So one personal item was my goal. Of course, I have my puppy pack for my puppy's new forever family. So I found the largest purse that I own and I packed it all up. So traveling with a dog on a plane, few requirements. The first thing, when you're traveling on the inside of a plane, you need a soft-sided carrier, not a hard carrier. These are the rules. Got this at Walmart for like 20 bucks. I also have this little gift bag that I send home with every single puppy, but of course I'm having to transport it on a plane. When you are traveling with a dog, you always want to make sure that you have a current copy of the rabies certificate, or in the case of a puppy, a record of all of their puppy vaccines. With each of the puppies that I place, they come with not only a contract, but a current health certificate that does include all of the vaccines that have been administered. I also give in the puppy pack the food that they are currently eating, which in this case is Royal Canin Puppy, along with toys, which most definitely have to include chew toys, and a blanket that has the scent of mom, and of course home, to help make their adjustment just a tad bit easier. Seriously, I'm supposed to be eating five meals a day. That's what I'm supposed to be eating. And I'm not gonna be able to do that on the plane. So what I'm doing is bringing one of my little shaker bottles. I have pre-portioned protein mix. And I've got three of them in here, just in case. And of course, I have me some almonds to snack on. So if I get my fats, I get my protein, I'm good to go. So, how did this adventure come to be? Passport. Socks. Because I'm going to need socks. Cannot wear flip-flops in New Jersey. Thinking no. 
Gabby reached out to me from my website after she saw Tino at Westminster. Yep, she lives in New York and saw him on his big day. I've added a link up above and in the description so you can actually watch that episode. But until then, I'll tell you, she fell in love with a puppy I named Alabama Slammer on my website and wanted to make him part of her family. For me personally, as a breeder, I like to meet the person who is actually getting a piece of my heart. That's of course my puppies. Now if I had a choice, I would prefer the new family to come to me so they can see my home and see my dogs and see how they were raised when they choose one of my puppies or dogs to be a part of their family because you see now they're part of my family it doesn't mean i rule out out-of-state people we just need to make different arrangements and we're off i've done facetime interviews and i've also used puppy transportation services <laughs> this could be interesting I have some extremely awesome friends that provide some of the most amazing transportation opportunities out there. Whether it be over the road or in the skies, puppy nannies are a great option. This is his first time away from his sibling. Not his first time in the car, not his first time in a carrier, but first time alone. So Gabby, I'm sorry and you're welcome. Fees for transporting a dog are usually around $350 to $400. Now, when flying a dog, it's that fee plus the cost of a ticket. In this case, I was totally up for the adventure of transporting it myself. So, flying in and out of two major airports definitely kept the cost down. Like, my ticket was under, I don't know, $150? bucks. It was a total win-win for us. You see, Gabby needed me to transport the puppy because she was unable to get the time off of work. But her mom was available to meet me at the airport. And, of course, pick him up. So... This little guy was being transported by me to his new home, and I was getting to meet the whole family. Okay, level two, Roby. So I remember because I won't remember. I can smell it, I can smell it. Oh my God, I can smell it. Oh, what did you do? Oh my God, it's a revenge poop. So I'm sorry, Gabby, you're not gonna get the blanket because he pooped all over everything. Beautiful. All right, well, I'll wash it and mail it to you. But of course, until all of that could actually happen, yeah, I still had to, uh, I don't know, get on the plane. With that mess cleaned up and diverted, and the understanding of why he was actually whining becoming crystal clear, now it was time to get through security at an international oh. airport with a dog in tow. It's really not any more difficult than having any other kind of carry-on, but of course, in this case, you cannot put the dog through the scanner, people. I get to avoid all that because I have a pet. Be sure to let the people know you have a dog with you and take them out and carry them through. Of course, after I put my shoes back on, it was time to take the amazing MCO adventure to the terminal. I always love that little people mover thing. It's a quick short ride that's reminiscent of Tomorrowland at Disney World. I love it. Please stand clear of doors and hold onto handrails. The doors are now closing. Waiting at the gate is always a unique adventure when you have a puppy with you. Who doesn't like to see an adorable little puppy? It always seems to bring the pet lovers around, which of course I don't mind because it's yet another opportunity for awesome socialization. We have fans. Hi, Bama. Once we were finally on board, tucked in nice and cozy and ready for our three hour flight to Newark Airport, now it was time for me to, I don't know, nap. Yep, that's what I do on planes. I nap and probably snore and probably drool. Yeah. So, to all of my past, current, and future travel companions, I apologize now. The puppy traveled silently like a perfect little boy, probably because he no longer had to shit himself. And honestly, no one even knew he was there. Not even my road companion, who only came to understand she traveled with a puppy sitting next to her once we were getting ready to land. Abby's mom, Beatrice, and I had already exchanged phone numbers, but then, of course, we exchanged selfies so we knew who to look for once we were finally able to both be together in baggage claim. Because you all know what it's like to try to deboard a plane and get to baggage claim. Probably the most unpleasant part of the whole trip. And once we were finally all together, that moment we had all been waiting for was finally upon us. Hi! It was amazing. Me, Beatrice, and the puppy, along with Gabby, calling in via FaceTime. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so awesome. With a couple of hours to kill before my return flight to Orlando, Beatrice and I decided to do lunch and hang for a little bit. I already fell hard for Gabby as an ideal forever family for one of my puppies. Now to know her mom and extended family were just as cool and amazing makes this whole thing so cool. 
After an amazing visit and rather decent airport meal, it was time for me to head back to the gate to fly home. Beatrice and the puppy formerly known as Alabama Slammer said their sweet goodbyes. Now, I know you're all curious to know what his new name is, right? I can't roll my R's. Bye. 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 Churro. Churro. Oh, churro. Oh, <laughs> and with that, we were all off on our next adventures. You know what I'm doing. Yep. My traditional coffee mug purchase from the local Starbucks was first on the list. Then back through security with bare feet, but this time without a puppy. With an announcement of a one hour delay, of course, after I got to the gate, that made for more sitting and waiting for what seems like endlessly in an airport, and of course, more bathroom adventures. Unlike those made in China last year, this time the signs in the US bathroom made me stop and definitely take pause. Wow. Okay. So now, back to Once we finally did get into the air, I was able to make my third out of five meals of the day. More than I anticipated, but this was the one I actually planned for. The liquid diet. The flight itself was just as nap inspiring as the one in the morning, but this time I did try to catch up on paperwork and files, but yeah, it didn't last very long. That three hour flight was over a lot quicker than it felt and soon I was finally back in Orlando. Back onto the infamous tram transporting me from the terminal back to my car. This ride is always special because it's truly a piece of coming home. It's like part of the whole tradition of flying in or out of MCO. And another tradition that always seems to happen no matter how much I try to pre-plan, yeah, that would be me trying to find my car. Now I have to remember where I parked my car. I think I'm over here. What did I say? Level two row. It was dark. Mm. Anyone that has traveled with me or shopped with me, basically ridden in my car, you know that this take all day. Uh, I think I see my car. I see my car. <sighs> Thank God for all those magnets on my ass. <laughs> it's my car. Once my car was found, now it was time to make my race to see Duncan and the girls. This was a Tuesday, and every Tuesday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., I am at boot camp kicking butt and sweating big time. I was bound and determined to keep my schedule no matter how tired or jet-lagged I was. Yes, Orlando traffic sucks, but if you know me, you know I was not going to let that stop me. So, I've arrived in Orlando in rush hour traffic. So awesome. Coming out of OIA. Nice. But you also got to see the full transition of my hair, which usually does happen every day. It starts down and ends up up. And um, it looks like I'm definitely gonna have to go straight to the gym. Straight to the gym. All in all, this was a pretty darn successful day. An adorable figgy puppy made his way to his new home with his new family safe and sound. I made it in and out in one day and in one piece while still being able to keep my regularly scheduled boot camp. I would have to call this winning. So with that, congratulations, Gabby. And I think it's Chalupa. Whatever it is, he is absolutely adorable and want and need for nothing, making him the happiest little boy on the planet. And I got me a new mug to add to my collection. So who wants me to transport a puppy next? I am totally ready to go, need more mugs, and I have my huge purse ready to pack. There's your poop stain. Yep, there's your poop stain. <laughs>